Hello everybody, welcome back to the Reduction of the Strengths Materials video. In this video we're going to be talking about power and power transmission, which is once again another super easy topic. As long as we have a good background uh, on some previous topics related to torque uh, and a couple of small ones that uh, have been covered in our previous courses. And I think the best way to start understanding what power is, is just explaining what we already know, which is torque, and looking at the units behind torque versus power. And you'll notice that the only difference here, for torque we have newton per meter typically, and for power we have newton meter per second. So what this is trying to tell us is that power is simply the work done over a certain period of time or a certain unit time. Now, where is this coming from? Why, why does this make sense? Now, I mentioned the word work. Work is pretty much the force applied to a system to have it displaced a certain amount. Now, in the case of a shaft, we have something very similar where we have to consider the work done. And once again, we've been working with shafts where the angle of twist and torque are super important and we're working about that longitudinal axis. So the force being applied in those cases will be a torque times the displacement, obviously relative to that longitudinal axis, will have to do with the angle of twist developed at any point. Now, once that's out of the way, we have to understand where this unit of time is coming from in this formula. And we need to consider the work done per unit of time. So what can we employ to relate to this? We can employ the angular velocity to this formula. Now let's recall what velocity was in the past. We had a distance over a time. And simply relating that to our current problems, the angular velocity will be that distance or displacement as the angle of twist theta over a certain amount of time. We're leaving you with radians per second, plugging that back into your original formula where you have torque times the angular velocity. And that leaves you with the simplest form for power in torque problems. Uh, once again, we're emphasizing that we're working about longitudinal axes to derive these formulas. Now in SI units, uh, we're typically writing power in terms of watts, which is why we have the Newton meter per second uh, convention right here. And Newton meter is actually uh, directly related to what a joule is. Um, but you may be asking some problems to convert this power into different terms, such as horsepower. And horsepower is equivalent to about 746 uh, watts, but you'll have all these conversions given to you whenever you're doing a problem like this. Now, another final important relationship uh, to make this power formula a little bit easier to work with is the frequency. Now, how is angular velocity related to frequency? Well, we understand that uh, in our problems, if we look at the shaft, as we make one full rotation or one full cycle around that shaft, the angle of twist will be correlated to 2 pi, which is that full 360 completion around that shaft just written in radians. Now that we understand that, we can simply relate that the angular velocity is going to be equivalent to the frequency, which is the number of cycles completed per time, related to what a full cycle actually is. Now using that back into our formula, plugging that back in, we're gonna be left with a simpler formula which we can use to solve problems like this. So let's hop in and see what we're dealing with. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this problem. And the problem is as follows. The motor A develops a power of 300 watts and turns its connected pulley at 90 revolutions per minute. And the problem is asking us to determine the required diameters of the steel shafts that are connecting the pulleys at A and B such that the allowable shear stress in these shafts is equal to 85 MPa at a maximum, all right? Now, the first thing I love doing with these problems is just making sure that all the units are super clean to work with. And I know that angular velocity is typically in radians per second. So I'm gonna convert this 90 revolutions per minute into radians per second. And we're gonna do so by just simply writing it down and then canceling out our terms here. So we know that for one minute, we have 60 seconds. And we also know that for one revolution or for one full cycle about that longitudinal axis, we're gonna have two pi radians completed, which is equivalent to a full 360, right? 
canceling the revolutions, canceling the minutes, we're left with radians per second. And that's going to leave you with 3 pi radians per second. Now, the next part of this problem, I want to explain the logic and the understanding of what we're trying to solve at the end of the day in this problem. We're given the power that's developed by the motor at A, and now we have the angular velocity at A. So using this power formula, we can backtrack to what the torque is that's developing in the pulley A. And we know that this problem is simply asking us to determine the allowable stress that develops in the shaft. And we have a torque now, so we can actually go back to our original formulas that we worked with before and work backwards just so we can solve that diameter uh, in the polar moment of inertia, right? So that's the understanding. Now let's solve for it. We have to re-isolate this formula such that we have torque at A being solved for. And we have power over angular velocity at A. Plugging in our units, we have 300 newton per meter per second, over second, sorry. And we have the angular velocity, which we solved for previously, which is 3 pi radians per second. Remembering that radians is a unitless convention. Uh, we are going to be left with something that looks like this, 31.83 newtons per meter. Now this next part of the video is going to be explained in more detail with my gear ratio video that is following uh, this upload. So if you want to watch that, you can probably click the top here whenever that gets uploaded. But we're going to use a relationship in order to solve for the angular velocity of B. And we have the angular velocity of A right now. And we're going to use a ratio to relate that to the angular velocity of B by looking at the radius being uh, used for both pulleys. You'll notice I changed the arrow. Uh, it's pointing right at the shaft now. I actually had to change it from the start of this video. So I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, the radius of A will be related to the radius of B. These two ratios are going to be very helpful in future videos as well. Uh, and we're going to explain the logic uh, of why this ratio makes sense and this relationship makes sense. By first imagining that pulley A was the exact same radius as pulley B. And if we applied uh, this angular velocity and we completed one full rotation in this first pulley, if the diameters were exactly the same, that force is going to be transferred and allow pulley B to also complete one full rotation. However, that's not the case here. The case here now is pulley A is actually a much smaller radius. So if we think about this diameter of uh, the pulley and take the circumference as a straight line and place that line transferring through the system into pulley B, as you complete one full cycle at A, you're not completing a complete cycle on B. And that's because the radius is different. And that's as simple as it gets right there. That's where the relationship is coming from. So now using this relationship, why do we even need this in the first place? Well, we need to determine what the angular velocity is at B so that we can get the torque at B so that we can work back to this formula and find out what the diameters are for both of these shafts because they both have different torques applied uh, for these pulleys. And once again, that video will be coming soon to explain this concept a little bit better, but just for now, let's live with the fact that this relationship exists. So rearranging this for the angular velocity of B, we're going to be left with angular velocity A over the radius of A over the radius of B. Now we can plug in our terms. We have 3 pi, which we solved for. And that's going to be radians per second. And the radius of A is 0 0.06 meters. And the radius of B is 0 0.15 meters. Solving that, you are left with an angular velocity of b equal to 1.2 pi radians per second. And once again, we're doing a very similar thing where we have to now get the torque at b, which is equal to the power developed in the system over the angular velocity at b. And we know how those units work already up top over here. So we have 300 over 1.2 pi 
which will equal 79.58 newtons per meter. Now we can go ahead and use our original formula to solve for what we don't know, which is the diameter of the shaft. So let's start plugging in the numbers that we have here. If we re-isolate our formula for the shear stress allowable, we're going to have torque times C, which is that radius from the longitudinal axis to the outside uh, edge of that shaft over the polar moment of inertia. So for A, we're going to have something that looks like this, where we have 85 times 10 to the 6 to get this in newtons per meter. Sorry about that, newtons per meter squared. And then on the other side for A, we have already solved it up here, 31.83 newtons per meter. And C is going to be talking about the shaft. We don't know the properties of the shaft yet, so we're just going to leave it as the diameter at A over 2. And then over the polar moment of inertia. So that's going to give us pi over 2. DA over 2 for radius once again. That's the solid shaft. And that's to the power of 4. Simplifying this formula you're going to be left with dA equal to 12.4 millimeters. And you can do a very similar solving process at B. So if you just write down for B here, we're going to have 85 times 10 to the 6, which is equal to the torque that we solve for for B, 79.58 dA over 2 over that polar mode of inertia once again. Pi over 2. Sorry, this should be dB. I'm losing my mind on this problem. Sorry, everybody. dB over 2 to the power of 4. Solving for dB, leaving us with 16.8 millimeters at the end, leaving you with two final answers. And that's it for this problem. Uh, stick around for the next one where we get into the gear ratio. Uh, and I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.